Hello, Sagittarius. Welcome to your weekly reading for January 22nd to the 29th. This is for Sagittarius and Sagittarius Rising, and we're just going to jump right into it because this is a loaded week. It is the most important week of the month, and it is a very powerful week with a lot going on. So we are kicking it off. Actually, over the weekend, we had the sun and Pluto moving into Aquarius. So there's a lot of energy there. There is not one snooze button in this world that is going to be pressed. Listen, if you had felt the winds of change uh, the past week, the past month, you are now going to feel currents of change. This is a lot of change, okay? Especially in the way of uh, communicating. There could be like a much bigger platform that you're eyeing. Uh, there's also, um, you know, all this activity in Aquarius is your third house of communication, writing, researching, uh, also, uh, you know, just gaining knowledge. But uh, siblings, aunts, uncles, cousins, Neighbors could be a big thing, especially with Saturn and Pisces for you in your fourth house. A lot of y'all could be moving, could be getting new neighbors, could be doing something with home. But uh, either way, there's a lot happening as we kick it off. Okay, Aquarius, by the way, you know, it is a sign. It's an air sign, right? So a lot of mental activity, a lot of thinking, but a lot of, a lot of like forward thinking, okay? Like uh, really being future forward. Now, uh, Aquarius is known to be very inventive, the innovators. They're also, you know, the most rebellious sign. They march to their own drum beat. Uh, they're also like very individualistic. So it really is like I've been saying in other readings, kind of like Robin's uh, Dancing on My Own. I love that song. Uh, so keep that in mind. So you're going to feel a lot of this energy in Aquarius. Now, when we kick off this week, and this is why I feel like you're going to have a really, really big transformative moment, especially when it, uh, it, it comes to uh, money could be a big thing. But the reason why I say that is because the moon will be in cancer for the first half of the week okay the moon rules cancer the moon rules cancer so there's that ah uh, feel good just like very nurturing side of you coming out uh it brings a lot of emotional depth a lot of emotional intelligence heightened intuition as well is a big thing but it's such a nice placement and it happens to be in your eighth house and so already do you see that the eighth house is transformation? And so you see the changes, uh, you, even like on this really deep emotional level, thinking about changes uh, and transforming your life. Now, here's the other thing is that eighth house also rules shared resources. So investments, inheritance, bonuses, commissions, paying off debts, uh, maybe uh, partner's income. There could be some activity around that uh, that you may be thinking about. Now, on the 23rd, notice we're only on Tuesday, okay? Now on the 23rd, Venus moves into Capricorn. I hope you're taking notes. This is actually a really big deal, especially for you if you are here for money. Keep in mind, Mars is still in Capricorn, and so is Mercury. We have a stellium in Capricorn, the inner planets at play here. This is really big, all in your second house of salary, money, uh, uh, finances, income. This is going to be big. Now, if you are not here for Nor uh, money, and I, and, and I always say, like, if you are like the king of Norway, watching this video, sitting on like gold bars. Uh, second house is also self-worth and self-value. So a lot of just like emotional intensity that kicked off with this week. A lot of y'all could be feeling that now, feeling a lot more confident in moving forward. Because remember, Mars is in Capricorn helping that. And then Venus, all about love and beauty and uh, even money. Venus is money and, you know, romance and sex. And Venus represents a lot of things. But now that Venus is in Capricorn, it's a very unique placement because it's almost... Uh, uh, you know, being very practical, being very disciplined in the way of uh, the things that your heart desires, right? Thinking it out and planning it out, having these long-term goals. Now, remember, we have still, even though we're in Aquarius season, all this activity in your second house of money. So that could be something that you're thinking about setting yourself up for the future you could building this be you could be building this new system for yourself okay because we're, we're talking about capricorn here all right so this is a, a really big thing at the end of the day it really is about like your commitment level to uh uh the things that your heart desires okay and money okay money is going to be a big thing now when we get to thursday we have the full moon in leo the another big aspect this is really big this one's very interesting. I love moons in Leo. I love it's very playful. It's very fun. A lot of family energy, a lot of children energy around this as well. Like, uh, you know, like really that feel good energy. Uh, if you have kids that, you know, it may be a really nice time. 
This full moon in Leo will be opposite the sun in Aquarius squaring Jupiter. This is so crazy. Now, what does this mean for you, Sagittarius? Well, this full moon in Leo happens to be in your ninth house, okay? Spirituality, your belief system, the way that you see things, your 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 uh, even education is, is part of the ninth house, publishing, uh, long distance travel. And so as you know, full moons culminate. So there could be something culminating around that time in this area of your life. So you could be seeing things in a different way at this point. Remember, you're going through this transformative week. So uh, with that said, this is a day around this time. I want you to think about what do you have to let go? You're going to be asking that yourself, okay? What are some things that may be draining? What are some things, and you may even feel it this day, okay? It's a powerful full moon. What are some things that, with with the other aspects, what are the things uh, that I'm exerting a lot of energy into that maybe I don't even like anymore? So spend some time thinking about that because we're now approaching Friday, where things get a little wild. So Friday, Uranus goes direct. Uh, this is huge because at this point, no planets are retrograde. There are no planets in retrograde. When I say you will feel currents of change, there is a lot of change and really, really almost like being propelled forward. I mean, this is if you want action, you got it. You if you ask for action, here it is. All right, so uh, this is really big because Uranus going direct. Uranus is the ruling planet for Aquarius, and Uranus and and remember we are in Aquarius season, but Uranus is all about breakthroughs. It's all about uh, innovation. Uh, you know, uh, it's also you know what it is. It's the unexpected. Okay, uh, it's surprising shifts as well. Uh, even just surprises, even when they discovered, uh, you know, discovered right with with the telescope. Uh, Uranus. It was surprising for them. It was a big breakthrough. And so uh, just keep that in mind because Uranus is going to play a very pivotal role this weekend, which we are going into Saturday now. Mercury conjuncting Mars. Again, a very auspicious aspect in your second house of money and salary and income. And then on the same day, Venus exiling Saturn. This is love. This is money. This is beauty. This is stability. Remember, Saturn does bring that sense of stability. So there could be a sense of uh, money, finances, but also you thinking about home at the same time too. It's longevity. Remember, there's this commitment energy. And when I say home, just like the foundations of your life are are really strong at this time. Don't forget, Mars exiled Saturn uh, like a week, two weeks ago. You're still feeling that as well. So just at this point, expect changes. Expect changes that you may be adjusting to. If you have a lot of ideas, put them into action now. All right. It's a really great time because now we're getting to the 28th Sunday, Venus trining Jupiter. If you saw my monthly forecast, you know, well, you know that it's my birthday on that day. So I'm very excited for this day because of what's happening this day. I'm curious to see what happens because Venus trines Jupiter, the best day of the month. Okay. The best day of the month. We're talking about Venus. We're talking about Jupiter, your ruling planet. Jupiter, which expands. Venus, which is money, which is love, which is beauty, which is creativity. Uh, really, really amazing. Really amazing day. Okay, really amazing day, especially because, uh, 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 well, if you are single, by the way, it's a really great day for to go on a first date. OK, and you may actually have like a surprising moment around this time, like a sliding doors moment where you do meet your soulmate. Uh, but I really do love this day because if you think about what's happening, I mean, Venus is in Capricorn, right? Jupiter is in Taurus. And then on this day, like the moon is in Virgo. And so there is this earthiness, right? All these three earth signs there. It's, it's grounding, right? Remember, there's that long term energy for this week. Now, on the same day, Mercury will try and Uranus. And so, again, expect the unexpected. This is a time, Mercury, all about logic. It's it, it, Remember, for you, the way that you're seeing things, thinking things, there could be some sudden moment of clarity, a breakthrough in the way that you see things if you felt like you're hitting a wall. The other thing is, Mercury, remember, communication, okay? And so there could be something uh, you hear. You could get surprising news around this time. And what's really amplifying this is the day after on the 29th. Yes, we're moving into Monday, but the trio of, of aspects here come as a package on Monday. Mars will try in Uranus the day after Mercury trines to Uranus. So you see very powerful Uranus energy here. Mars, all about action. Remember, Mars, money, 
right? For you, Mars being in Capricorn, money, salary, self-worth, self-confidence if you're not here for money. So, yeah, expect the unexpected, put ideas in motion. I mean, this really is a time where you could even uh, surprise yourself with, with uh, you know, having breakthroughs of your own that you didn't think that uh, you could do. Like, this is uh, a big, big, big weekend. Uh, it really is a window into... Uh, uh, into the changes that are going to be happening in your life. All right. But definitely take action. Definitely take action. And with that said, let's get started. Okay, Sagittarius, let's see what's going on for you for the week of January 22nd to the 29th. This is for Sagittarius and Sagittarius rising. And if you do want to read for your moon, your Venus, all those other ads, if you know your birth chart, those placements, um, you are absolutely welcome to if you want more uh, intel, insight in those areas of your life, as you know, with the full moon in Leo. I mean, maybe a good idea to read for your moon i mean there's it, it, it's it's up to you it's up to you let's go ahead and get started sagittarius now like i said earlier i do a traditional cult across spread really does uh offer the best overview if we need to pull clarifiers we'll pull clarifiers secondly sagittarius uh you're amazing thanks so much for being here you know i love you sagittarius did we ever decide if uh sagittaro is was a thing <laughs> was that a thing are we going with that? Are we are we gonna drop that? Uh, let me just pull the. Okay, there we go. Now you can. Okay. Uh, wow. Look at you. Look at you. Now. Um, okay, you're good. You're good. You are definitely on this spiritual journey. You're definitely on this spiritual journey. Not surprised with the full moon in Leo and it's coming up big here. Okay. So really pay attention to the full moon in Leo. All right. Now you got the Knight of Wands. Really love this. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready to get, I'm getting like some of y'all could have been in some sort of, um, it almost feels like you were in this place where it was like you were fighting hard or you were in a rut or something was going on. Uh, but it's almost like, you know, with the Knight of Wands, which, by the way, is Sagittarius. OK, uh, in, in your past, it's like breaking free, going after your passions, taking that action. Remember, that is the most important thing. Taking action. Knights are all active. They're all, all, all about action and action in terms of uh, uh, going after your passions, uh, even ideas that you have really running with them now, uh, 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 work related to with the wands. But here's the thing about the Knight of Wands is that very transformative energy here, not only with, you know, you can see the salamander is very close on his like tunic uh, in, in shaping the Ouroboros, right? Life cycles. But uh, you also see the pyramids in the background. I call them like resurrection machines. Now, uh, so this is really big because again, remember that moon in cancer for the first half of the week in your eighth house of transformation. Very big thing. Life cycles, right? So now comes to justice. And so really going toward the things that are what you consider like fair in your life. It's almost like this week with justice and the heart of your spread, which is a big deal. Okay. It's a really big deal. It's almost like you look at your entire spread here. It's almost like a lot of y'all may have a lot of questions. Um, like asking yourself, am I doing the right thing? Am I doing the right thing? But it's, a week where you're going to have the answers. And in order to have the answers, you, you're you going to be going within and you're going to have to let something go. You're going to have to let something go with this full moon in Leo. Again, that is your ninth house of spirituality. So much spirituality with, you know, with the justice card, especially because uh, a lot of karma that's attached with the justice card. Okay. Um, but it still is just a matter of like, what's right for me. Uh, if there have been some, uh, uh, things that you've been going through where, again, it's more like having things play out in your favor in a fair way, okay? And also trusting in yourself and trusting that everything will play out. And there is a lot of truth with the Justice card. There is a lot of wisdom in the Justice card. There's a lot of balance. And you even see the balance, uh, sorry, the scale in the judge's hand here. And the Justice card is ruled by Libra, all right? Which is all about balance. And so finding that balance in your life, having like also acknowledging, it's almost like, remember when I brought up karma, that's coming up really big for me. Uh, it's almost like understanding like the spiritual consequences of like, if I don't take this action, if I don't make things right, uh, how is that going to affect me like on a spiritual level, on my spiritual journey? Again, remember this full moon in Leo, which is very powerful, is in your ninth house of spirituality. OK, and so with any action, you want to think about that. 
You also want to remember, sure, actions have consequences, but equally so, inaction have consequences too. So take that action this week, okay? Now, you got the empress, but in your challenge area, all right? So there is a sense of, uh, well, two things that are coming up for me. One is the, uh, uh, so this full moon in Leo, like I said earlier, it's 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 opposite the sun at Aquarius and also squaring Jupiter. There is a sense of like overindulgence with that. There is a sense of like maybe even like extravagance. And so with the Empress, which is all about, you know, luxuriating and abundance and, you know, it's such a, it's such a feel good card in your challenge era. There could be a sense of that, like, uh, being aware of the things that you may be a little bit like indulging in. And maybe that is something that you have to go. Okay. And whatever resonates with you, obviously every Sagittarius is different and don't forget your last week's reading. Remember you did have the, you did have the devil right in your, uh, external factors area. So, uh, yeah, so it, it really is still playing out here. So there is something like what do I have to release? What do I have to surrender? What is not serving me well? What is something that maybe something that I'm like, maybe uh, focusing a lot on that is draining and maybe not bringing me that sense of luxury that I want. And I got to shift that focus. The other thing is there could be someone in your life that's a little like that, you know, it could be. And it, it again, what resonates with you? Are you uh, married to somebody, you know, I mean, you did get justice, right? The judge, very strong marriage connotation with a justice card. Are you married to someone who, you know, is spending all your money on, you know, crab dolls or something? I don't know, like whatever it is. And you're just like, all right, that's got to stop. I've recognized that. I've got to have that conversation. Communication is really big for me this week. I need to communicate and take action. So just be aware of those things and, you know, just have those moments. If, if you need to have to, it's all about facing your truths and being honest with other people. There's so much truth and honesty here. Now you have the 10 of wands in your crown. You're ready. You're ready. You're ready to uh, unload. Okay. You're ready to unload. That is kind of like the biggest thing is just like letting go of those things that may be burdensome for you. Okay. So remember, you have to take that action and you have to be aware of the uh, things that may be uh, a little bit too much. All right. Also ask yourself, are you distracting yourself from things that you really need to pay attention to? Right. You can even see here, the Ten of Wands, he can't even see where he's going. He's just got too many wands, right? And so there is a sense of like a little bit of burden with this card, a little bit of burnout in this card, but also a little bit of like distracting yourself, working too hard from the things that you know you have to talk about, like your your partner, uh, you know, having buy, spending all the money on dolls <laughs> or whatever it is, whatever it is. But what's really interesting is Seven of Wands. And the root of your spread, uh, very, very, very interesting. Very, very, very interesting because there is a sense of like having that strength uh, to really, really stand up for yourself, to really draw a line in the sand at this point. And if you saw your last week's reading, it was in the heart of your spread last week. And so now it's in the root of your spread. And so now it's really like going deep going deep, finding that, you know, the seven is the seven of ones is all about valor. Okay. It's all about valor. And, and by the way, seven of ones, uh, Leo, it's a Leo card. And so remember this full moon in Leo is going to be very big. Speaking of, you know, if we're attributing cards, 10 of ones, Sagittarius. All right. So, uh, 10, by the way, is the end. Okay. So there is a sense of like, wanting to come to the end of this, like anything that may have been, uh, or maybe this week, like stressful or burdensome or just something again, like even it could be something where you feel like you're distracting yourself from something. And, and, and now you have to, you know, uh, recognize that now you did get the hermit in your future. Very interesting. Go deep, go within. Okay. Uh, very interesting, a lot of wisdom in your spread this week, especially with, you know, well, with the justice and then the hermit, which is, uh, you see, it's all gray here. Gray and tarot is wisdom. And so the hermit is someone who has made a lot of achievements and now he wants to see what's next for himself. He's removed himself from everyone, right? Very Aquarius, right? To, to, 
to do that. Remember I said it's like very independent energy, uh, but removed himself from everybody to really think about that, to really do that soul searching. Okay. Think about the medieval times, right? When tarot came out, people would trek for days, weeks, however long to get that sage advice, sage wisdom from the hermit because he knows, right? He knows that light. It's not, it's not there. It's not in the lantern. It's inside him. Okay. All that wisdom, all that knowledge inside and so it looks like you will be doing that deep dive into like some soul searching. And for a lot of y'all, I'm not going to lie, it's going to be some some career activity, okay? There's going to be some career stuff that y'all are going to be thinking about this week. And that's going to be, uh, and, and, and it can be like that soul searching in terms of like career um, and, 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 and what comes with that. Um, but yeah, I mean, you're good, especially because there is, remember, uh, a lot of that spirituality uh, energy with that full moon in Leo. And then a lot of it does exist with like the moon in Cancer anyway, with like that intuition energy that comes out and and, and that heightened uh, emotions and, you know, emotional intelligence. But you're you're good. There is it's almost like things are going to work out for you. There is like even like, you know, some of y'all could be in a set place where uh, you may be thinking about marriage as well. That could be a big thing for you, especially with that focus on home with Saturn and Pisces. But you're good. You're fine. You're fine. Let's get to your stuff. Uh, Sagittarius. If you like this reading, by the way, it'd be great if you like, subscribe, leave comments. Sagittarius, I want to hear from y'all. I want to know what's going on. And um, if you are a subscriber, thanks so much for being here. Y'all are amazing. I wouldn't be here without you. I really am grateful. I really do appreciate it. And I, am, I know I'm talking really fast because there's a lot going on. There's there's so much happening. Um, okay. So um, yeah, there's there's a lot happening again, um, but it does look like you are moving forward, which is really great. But you are definitely going to be uh, 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 possibly in your head a little bit this week. Now, hello, you got the sun. Amazing. Okay. Move toward the sun. The sun it, it, it radiates. There's warmth. It's light. Okay. Move toward the light right now. And this is really great because this card is, I don't know if you've ever gotten a tarot reading. It's the biggest yes, right? It's abundance. It's opportunity. It's joy. There's a sense of like freshness and revival and purity. It's it, it victory as well. Okay. And so I want you to have that. Keep going toward that. Let that be like the, 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 you know, what is it like? when you're in a race the banner like in a marathon at the end of it is it a banner you like breaking through the banner let that be it okay I, literally there's a banner like a, a red banner in this card as well um now you did get the eight of swords sagittarius in your external factors area so again there could be some things when you look at what's happening here ten of ones seven of ones and like justice in the heart of your spread even with the empress in your challenge area i mean there could be some Mm, going on up here um there's uh so two uh, another again two two things coming up one that yeah this we refer to as like the self-victim card right so uh this is something uh you can see that she's wearing a blindfold she's bound she's surrounded by swords she put herself there she thinks she's protecting herself where the reality is she built this like prison right prisoner of her thoughts remember the swords are all up here, all up here. And so remember what I said, take action. It is time to take that action to the point where you can see her feet are free so she can walk out of this anytime she wants. Anytime she wants. It's up to you to, if you do feel like a lot's going on, all right? Uh, you it, it, and, and there are some truths that you need to face. This would be the week to do it, especially with justice and the heart of your spread. You see that the judge also holds a sword, right? And so use that sword. Use that sword to cut anything you don't need from your life to, to, to create that balance in your life. Now, you also got the eight of cups, okay? Um, it seems like you do want to move forward. It seems like there is a sense like, yeah, you know something is better for you, but you can't distract yourself from that anymore. And you have to be honest with yourself on the things that you do need to release, the things that you need to let go in order to move forward in this, you know, auspicious place in your life. And Hey, it looks like you will. It looks like you will. I, you know, I think that there is a sense of like, it's a lot of y'all, there's a little bit of like, um, it, it, it just so much like facing a lot of fears would be a thing that's happening for you this week. Uh, facing a lot of fears of your future, if you have any, all right. But knowing that you have 
all this potential to break through. Like Eurydice this weekend, right? Break free. Uh, the Chariot, by the way, what's very interesting about this, once again, why I feel like you're going to have a very transformative week is the Chariot is Cancer. And remember, we're kicking it off with the moon in Cancer for the first half of the week, which is in your eighth house of transformation. And speaking of transformation, there you go. There you go. It's uh, really moving forward from any obstacles at this point, any challenges, anything that has been holding you back, letting it go, okay, and leaving it in the past and just having that willpower, having that strength, having that determination to move forward in this very auspicious way, okay? And learning as you go. You may learn a lot about yourself this week, okay? You may learn a lot about, uh, a lot about yourself this week. The other thing is what's really interesting, you do see the two sphinxes here, right? And so there's that sense of like duality, okay? You see it with the justice card. Remember with this scale, that balance, you want to find that fine balance. But what's really interesting, the most thing interesting thing of all is that the chariot, He's not holding on to any reins. So if he's not holding on to reins, how is he controlling those sphinxes, right? Up here, okay? So a lot of it is your mindset. It's that confident. It's knowing that everything's going to have, uh, you know, uh, you're going to have this big impact with this uh, forward momentum, all right? But your mind has to be there too. And so this is a lot of like, this is a big week for you. It is going to be a big week for you. But, you know, with the hermit in your future, there is going to be a sense of like you really going deep, uh, but in a way that uh, makes you wiser in the decisions you make, the things that you do in your life. I mean, this is really big. This is actually a lot bigger than than you would think. Um but yeah, it's it's all about breaking free from like if you feel that there's a lot going on up here. It doesn't even have to be, you know, in your headspace too. you know, with a 10 of wands. It could even be things in your uh, physical reality where you're just like, what is going on? This is just a lot. It's it's a lot. Uh, but again, you have justice in the heart of your spread. OK, and so that's that's really nice here. Um, and then the chariot and your final outcome, which is moving forward. How much time do I have here? I'll do it. You, uh, you, let me do a clarifier for you. And then you're, uh, you're good. You're, you're fine. You're fine. It's all about, you know, moving forward, especially like knowing, having this confidence moving forward because you got the full. And so you do that. You're good. You connect mind, body, spirit, it, it, you know, you're good. You do that soul searching. You're good. You start this new cycle, this new cycle in your life uh, with the full. I mean, how amazing is that? How amazing is that? Uh, you, the full is, you know, zero, right? What is zero? Zero is nothing, but what's nothing? Nothing is everything. This is unlimited potential. This is like limitless possibilities. And this is you taking that leap of faith, having that confidence, right? Because, you know, confidence, confidence is taking risks, taking risks brings confidence. You see him standing on the edge of the cliff, no care in the world. You see the full abundance of the sun, right? Uh, that optimism there's so much optimism opp opportunity with this card it's also there's a sense of like leaving things behind because think about zero what comes before zero nothing nothing okay so it's not about the past anymore it's about the future and then remember all this energy and us being in a uh, aquarius season which is so like i said future forward you're about to start this new journey, okay? Well, you have the potential to. You definitely have this huge potential to. Something very big is coming. Just keep that in mind. Uh, something really big is coming. And, and interestingly enough, it could be very surprising because the fool is attributed to Uranus, the planet of surprises and the unexpected and breakthroughs. And therefore, a lot of Aquarius energy exists in this card because Uranus being the ruling planet for Aquarius. So uh, I really love this for you. Uh, there is, you are definitely on this new journey. There is this new cycle, this new journey that that uh, uh, auspicious that you can expect. Um, so Sagittarius, thanks so much for tuning in. If you like this reading, it would be great. If you like, subscribe, leave comments. Uh, next week, oh, February. I do February. I do February. It's a very, very different from January. So uh, Sagittarius, I'll see you next week. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.